welcome to Five Nations BRX at Home. Up next, we have Jack Thorne. Hello, Jack. Hello, how are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. And how are you? Yeah, not so bad, thanks. Tell me, how did you get into motorsport? Um, I was really born into motorsport. Um, Dad's always raced and been in motorsport all his life. Um, done a bit of circuit racing, he did, and then went on to rallying. Um, and then actually at three days old, I was carried by Colin McRae's Subaru team um, in Wales when it is uh, the Wales GB, um, the year he won it. So, yeah, not that I remember much of that, but I've always had a big motorsport background. And then when I was seven, I went into karting. Um, Dad retired from racing when I was seven to be able to um, fund me the best he could. And yeah, kept going from there through karting for many years, done British Championship, um, several times karting. Um, then I took a break out from motorsport and then went to Lyndon Hill and watched the Mayhem weekend of Rallycross, my first ever Rallycross um, event I'd been to to watch. Followed it on um, online a bit, but nothing, nothing up front like that. And yeah, fell in love with it immediately. So went home and um, started building a car, basically. Dad built a Super 1600 for me, a Citroen C2. And then the following year, we, we come out in that in Rallycross and we, we won the Super 1600 championship that year. So, and then, yeah, here we are now. And Dad's hating every minute of getting me into motorsport, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Very expensive sport. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So you won the 2018 British Rallycross Super 1600 Championship, as you just mentioned. I mean, tell me how that felt. Was that a really proud moment in your career? Yeah, it was. Um, it was because we'd done, done that in the Renault Twingo, which was a new car to us for that year. Um, and we had serious engine failure, um, which we changed engine builders, but obviously it took some time to get that sorted. So we had to bring the old car out mid-season. Um, which we still managed. We, we brought it out to pick up points, really, um, but we still managed to win, so it was really, yeah, it did help a lot. Um, I think I had a DNF from when the engine let go in the Twingo, um, so we was on the back foot and it went down to the last round, um, so it didn't go all our way throughout the year. Definitely didn't. It's far from that. Um, at home, behind the scenes, at track, it may have um, seemed different, but at home, it was a lot of sleepless nights and 24 hour stints in the workshop to make it all happen. And um, yeah, when it did finally come together, it was, um, could, yeah, we could breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned there about all the work that goes on behind the scenes. So how much preparation goes into you as the driver and your car as well for each race weekend? Um, me as a driver, is so I'm, I'm the main one on the cars getting them ready at home. Um, with dad but I put in the majority of the of the labor um, a lot so I don't get any time for fitness or anything like that because when I'm not working on the race cars I'm, I'm still in a workshop doing my day job working on other people's cars so and I literally never get time to go out and go to the gym or anything like that so as a driver for fitness not a lot <laughs> um, but for um, is in terms of behind the scenes of getting the cars ready, endless of hours. I was brought up, the car would never leave leave home to go to an event if it's not 100% ready. If, if there's any doubt about anything, we wouldn't go, as simple as that. Um, because enough can go wrong with rally cross cars at a meeting without turning up there worrying about one already. Um, so there's a lot of work goes into to the cars, especially a supercar. <laughs> and you mentioned supercars there. Um, you're you were intending to drive your Ford Fiesta in supercars. Tell me a little bit about that car. Yes, and the, the new car to us um, that we bought from JC um, in Sweden, we bought that at the end of last year. Um, we did go out and have a play in it last year at Lynn Hill, and it went very well. Um, so I tried supercar in 2016 um, with a car, which was the most unreliable thing I've ever met. And I've even met some unreliable people with that car top that <laughs> um, by far. Um, it really, really got to us. It was pouring good money after bad into the car. I had to kind of take a step back and say, we've got to, um, got to 
walk away from it for a bit. So we gave up on the supercar, which is not within me or dad or any of my family really to, to give in to anything, just keep digging deeper and deeper. But that got ridiculous. Um, so yeah, we, we went back to Super 600 and then we bought this new supercar, new to us, um, end of last year. And it's seen it's, it's a proven car. It's done European Championship in previous years. Um, and it's going to take steady and um, learn about it. But it is is a nice car. We've stripped it right down over the winter, um, back to a shell, and just tidied it up and put new co- components on. Not modified it at all because obviously, like I said, it's proven it works. So just if it works, leave it. Um, so yeah, just tidied it up really. Final few body panels to go on, and we're we're good to go. And last season you went off racing around Europe, but now you're intending to come back to Five Nations BRX. What is it about the series that has sparked your interest? What's making you come back? Um, it's, obviously, we spoke to Pat and it's looking like a really good championship now. It's um, going to be a really good organisation and good grids. Um, the events should should run nicely for the supercars, the layout he, he has in mind for them. So... Um, for all the classes, really, what he's done, even if I was to go back to the 1600 with the Magic 1600, so that's going to work really well as well. So there's lots of paths that I um, could take within the Five Nations now, but Supercar is the one I want to do and what we are fully committed to doing. So that that's the main one, and it's looking like it's going to be really good for that. So it would be um, this year would have been a good year, but when, when it gets going, it's going to be really good. And what are your aims and ambitions for the future? Um, obviously, I went off around Europe last year. That was a big, big thing for me um, to do that. It's just a family, self-built, little, small team. So that was a massive thing. Um, so that was a, a big achievement already. But to go on to Supercar and attack it fully, like we're, we plan to now, um, that is, again, another big achievement of... For the future, I would, I'd really like to get the um, Five Nations British Rallycross Championship title. Um, not this year, it, it wouldn't happen this year, but I'd like to think we could give a good push and be thereabouts and then progress from there for the next year. Um, so that would be a big achievement to win that with the, the little team I've got to run the car and to make it happen. It's, um, yeah, it's a great achievement just to get to the events, to be honest. <laughs> And do you have any motorsport heroes, anyone you look to for inspiration? You've mentioned your dad is a big part of your team and a big part of your support. And you also mentioned Colin McRae as well, was one of the sort of early influences in your career. Yeah, I can't, the, the rallying and Colin McRae, like I said, I was three days old, I don't quite remember that. But obviously everyone knows Colin McRae and I've seen many, many videos of him. Um, one I always remember is when he's rolling and banging down through the gears while he's mid-air to, to get back into first gear in case it does land on its wheels. Um, so yeah, he is uh, he's, he's something else. He's um, yeah, a very, very talented and gifted driver. Um, but Lewis Hamilton as well, when I've done the British um, Karting Championship, the top 10 drivers of the, in the championship at that point um, got a day spent with Lewis Hamilton um, at a track in the carts and that to meet him r- real personal kind of one-to-one with him for a whole day was was quite cool and he was um he's a really nice down-to-earth guy um and ever since then yeah I've, I've obviously followed him um and like him so yeah I do Colin, Colin McRae and him would be the ones I'd, I'd answer that question with so we found out a little bit about you as a driver. Now we'd like to find out a little bit more about you as a person. So what do you do for a day job? You mentioned that you worked on customer cars in a workshop. So what do you do? I mean, Dad would run a, a garage down here in Devon. Um, the family runs a garage, really. Um, it's all, all family team here. So, yeah, we run a garage. We do car sales. Um, your general garage repairs, servicing, stuff like that. And we do a lot of body work also. Um, so that's what we do, do to fund the racing. And what do you drive on the roads? We know about your race cars, but what do you actually drive when you're not at the racetrack? Well, I'm, I'm lucky enough I live, I got I had the house at, at the premises with the garage, so I don't have to drive to work. So I don't really need a car. 
Um, but I do have a car, which is uh, well, a van, a little three wheel, um, Rom Reliant Super Van 3, um, which I got just before Christmas in, um, I've re rebuilt it up really. Um, so it's looking, looking nice, nice little three wheel van, which I, I, I've took, took the missus out in that a couple of times. Yeah, she's she not a fan, but it does sound <laughs> a lot of fun. Is it yellow? It's not, no, it's gold. Oh, it's not quite Del Boy. Not quite Del Boy. Oh, wow, that must be quite interesting to drive. Having one wheel at the front must be very odd. <laughs> Do yeah, yeah. Do... teach you to be a smooth driver. You've got to drive it smooth. <laughs> if you start chucking it around trying to send it, it's, it that doesn't end well. So, yeah, it is, it is good for practicing to drive smooth. Have you tipped it over yet? <laughs> Not yet, no. I could do some stabilizers, but no, no we're, we're safe on that front just yet. Well, let's hope you don't tip it over. <laughs> no, that wouldn't be very ideal. So, outside of Rallycross, do you have any other talents we should know about? Can you do anything else apart from driving really fast? Um, I used to do um, horse horse driving trials. Is the, the oh, word wow. for it. like your free phase event in with your saddle ridden horses, uh, that with the, the carriage driving. So I've done that um, when I had the break from motorsport, which was two thousand and thirteen, I think. Um, we went to Windsor, come second at Windsor. And then we went and represented Great Britain out in Hungary. Um, so yeah, I suppose that yeah is, is a talent I'll, I'll own up to. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got some quick fire questions for you now. Are you ready? Yeah, fire away. Lydon Hill or Mondello Park? Lydon Hill, all day long. Batman or Superman? Superman. Formula One or World Rally Championship? World Rally Championship. TV shows or films? Films. Front wheel drive or rear wheel drive? I'd have to go front wheel drive as fun as rear wheel drive is. Front wheel drive is what I was brought up with. The question that divides the nation, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes. Ah, oh, good. Someone's in my club. Nobody likes yeah. it. I don't understand why. I think it's great. Yeah, they obviously don't make them like us. <laughs> Knock Hill or Pembrey? Uh, Pembrey. What is worse, doing the laundry or doing the dishes? There wouldn't be a lot in it, but <laughs> dishes. I'm very lucky I don't have to do either, but yeah, let's go with dishes. <laughs> During a race weekend, wet conditions or dry conditions? Um, wet suits me better. More fun. Yeah. Dogs or cats? Dogs. And the really important one, win at least one supercar final or have no accidents or repairs for the whole season? Win one supercar final. Oh, right answer. <laughs> That's the one everyone wants to do, isn't it? Win a supercar <laughs> final. And hopefully hopefully, we'll actually see you doing that at some point when we can get back racing again. I, and I'm, I have no doubt that we will see you there at, you know, at the front of the grid and hopefully on the top step of the podium as well. So thanks well, so much. We're going to go there to come second. So we'll, <laughs> we'll give it everything we've got. <laughs> so thanks for joining me today, Jack. It's been really interesting speaking to you. And it's pretty interesting to find out that you drive a three-wheeler on the road. So watch out, people that live near Jack Thorne, and um, don't drive too fast past him. You might tip him over. <laughs> <Blow me over. laughs> so thanks for joining us today here on Five Nations BRX at Home. It's goodbye from Jack. See you later. And goodbye from me. Bye. Bye.